Hello and welcome. My name is Chris Njoku. Today I'll be talking to us about cell referencing in a cell. Cell referencing is more like an identity that is given to cells in a cell spreadsheet. Cells have unique address. This address is known as cell reference. This helps us to identify cells for use in formula and in any other thing that you might decide to do part time. The cell reference comes from the column letter followed by the row number. Let's say this is column D. I'll click on column D and then row 6. This is this row 6 and then column D. So this cell reference is known as cell D6. So that is how we reference um, our cells in a cell. Let's say I decide to type into this particular cell. I type 600 into this particular cell. The reference of this cell is cell F5 because column F is represented and then row 5 is represented. So this is cell F5. So moving forward, in spreadsheet, a cell cell can hold one of three things can hold a test, it can hold a number, it can hold a formula. Let's say we decide to type the name of someone here, John. So this is a test now. And then John as a name is here on column F, row 7. So, John is in cell F7. Talking about number, we have written 600 on cell F5. And then it can also hold formula. Let's say we decide to multiply what is on this very cell to what is on this very cell. And so this is a formula as you see now. It's showing us C9 multiplied by D9. And the equal sign is what shows that what you're doing there is a formula. And so if we decide to press our enter key, it gives us a result. This is the multiplication of 50 by 330. So that is the third thing that um, cells can hold in a cell. Now let's look at types of cell reference. We have two basic types of cell reference. We have the relative reference and then the absolute reference, which I decide to color here with this yellow background so we can see it clearly. Now I'm going to explain the usage of both. We're going to look at the usage of relative cell reference and then the absolute cell reference. For the relative cell reference, let's assume that you work in an office and then every office has staff ID and basic salary. And in most cases, people work over time and then there is an overtime allowance accruable to your basic pay. And so when the cashier is trying to work out your total payout, this overtime allowance has to come in. And so your total payout will be based on your basic salary and your overtime allowance. Now, we can see here that the overtime allowance for every staff here differs. Of course, we know in 
a place of work. Some persons will work more time than others. And so um, the overtime allowance will be calculated in, in some cases, hours, in some cases to be calculated with your rank in that office on a monthly basis. So let's assume that the basic salary here is in dollars, let's say $1,280, and then you have a time allowance for CMD1. That's the staff ID of this very staff. So the total payout of this staff should be the basic salary plus the overtime allowance of the staff, which we added up here to give $1,780. That is $1,280 plus $500, which is $1,780. So we can see from our formula bar, what is written here now is equals to B3 plus C3. This is the cell reference for the salary, which is the B3, and then the cell reference for the overtime, which is C3. So that is the total payout of this particular individual. Now look at the next person. The basic salary here is on B4. And then the overtime is actually on C4. So the total payout should be basic salary, which is B4, plus the overtime, which is C4. So this is relative to individuals. So in cell referencing, relative cell referencing, you reference a particular cell with numbers. You reference a particular cell as um, the need arises. So this is just what um, relative cell reference does. So look at this again, B3 equals B3 plus C3. And the next will have equals B4 plus C4. So your outcome is based on what is in a particular um, cell per time as you're moving down. And so I say it's picking B3 and then add it up to C3 and move down to B4 and add it up to C4. That is how the referencing will be done all through. What um, relative cell reference is all about. Now let's look at the other type of reference which we call the absolute referencing. In absolute referencing, a particular cell will be referenced just once and then you move all through. Let's relate the first scenario to second scenario but with a slight difference. You know in the first scenario we said people have a time allowance that is agreeable to them as a result of their level and then maybe hour of overtime. But in absolute reference, the case might be slightly different. Let's say of um, these are staffs of the agency or the directorate, and then at the end of the month, they performed very well in a particular task and the director decided that everybody is going to have a flat bonus. A flat bonus means that the same bonus will be agreeable to every staff of the agency from CMD1 to CMD18. So the bonus is the same amount. There is no basis for calculating different amount, same amount. So we're seeing um, everything here as it should be. Basic salary, total payout. Now let me bring in the Bonus, let's say the bonus here is $200. Let me write it somewhere else. Let's say $200 bonus. And then 200 So this is it. Bonus 200 as what everyone we have. So in order to calculate the total payout using the absolute reference, there is need to reference the cell where the bonus figure is placed. In this case, our bonus figure has been placed on 
in O and row 1. So that is where our uh, bonus figure has been placed, which we can write as um, cell O1. We can write it as cell O1. So let's assume that we are bringing in the total amount now by calculating the basic salary, which is here we have it as J3 plus what is our bonus figure here? We have it as 200 and we're dropping it here. It's on cell O1. So that is the bonus um, figure. In absolute referencing, you do two things to the cell you have decided to reference. You add dollar sign to the column number and then you add another dollar sign also to the row number. Let me quickly do this so that we see what I meant by that. Before the O, you quickly add the dollar sign, which is shift four on your keyboard. And then after the column reference number, you also add another dollar sign before the row number. So we did the same thing, shift dollar one. So I have referenced this very bonus um, cell now. I hit my enter key. You can see what we have here now is $1,480, which is what is expected. I want to drag down now to the very last. So you can see that 200 has been added to everyone's total payout. So instead of 1280, we have 1480. Instead of $1,050, we have $1,250. Instead of $950, we have $1,150. Now, let's click on this very cell and then look at our formula bar to see what is written there. J3 plus dollar O dollar one. Look at the next one. We see J4 plus dollar O dollar one. So what is only changing is the basic salary cell um, reference number because of absolute cell referencing. The difference between absolute cell referencing and relative cell referencing is that the particular cell that you are using is not changing. However, the basic salary is changing because every staff has different basic salary, but the bonus is the same. So we're using a particular cell to represent everyone's bonus. And so we decided to add uh, a reference that is absolute to it, a reference that is not changing. So that is the difference between relative and absolute reference. As we move into deeper Excel, where we're going to be looking at HLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, you will appreciate better where the usage of absolute referencing will come to play. And then the relative referencing will also be taught. So have it in mind that there are two types of referencing in Excel. We have the relative referencing and then we have the absolute referencing. Thank you very much. Do well to subscribe to this YouTube channel. More videos will be coming your way from this channel. Thank you.